So Nora, we have a question here from Keen, who's from St. Louis Community School, and he asks, have you always been interested in science and what inspired you to do a career in science? So um, the, the answer really is yes, I was always really intrigued by science, you know, uh, knowing how things work or how things interact outside, uh, how plants grow, you know, since very early on. So that's really some, my, my initial motivation was just knowing how things worked. Um, but then um, the thing that really inspired me going into science is um, discovering the unknown, trying to cure a person, for example, from cancer, going into cancer, um, going into the genes that cause cancer and trying to explain that and trying to find, for example, a cure for cancer. Um, or um, if, uh, the, the thing, the, the work that I'm doing at the moment um, would be, for example, going into food and trying to find molecules in food that help people live healthier and longer. Um, and these molecules are very hard to find because, you know, there's millions of molecules in food. Mm -hmm. So computer science is good in a way because it, it allows me to go in and mine for those and then say that this molecule would lower diabetes. So this molecule then can be concentrated and added into other uh, foods that would help diabetic people, for example. So really the, the inspiration for me is, is uh, uh, helping uh, people, um, helping humans live healthier. Great. Very tough to follow up on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, how about you, David? What uh, well, I was more kind of thinking it was just what I was interested in. Yeah. Like that, you'd always, from a young age, you'd have trying to figure out why things work or how they work. I was definitely a Lego kid. Yeah. In the moments <laughs> of it. So I think that kind of fed the enthusiasm for it. And then just as I went through school and college, I would have just down selected and picked the parts I liked. So mm -hmm. I would have done like chemistry and physics in, in secondary school and kind of knew I was going to do one of them. And then when it came to the CAO, kind of stuck with the physics. And then obviously within the physics, you get choices as well. So you just kind of pick which you like, I think. Mm -hmm. And then fingers crossed, at the end of it, you get a job you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so were you all children then that, you know, like to have the chemistry set or take things apart? Or as you suggested, Lego, were they things that you would have had in your childhood? Um, uh, yeah, Not so much I, in mine. <laughs> yeah, I, I was per personally that way. Yeah, I was personally inclined. Um, well, you were on the fields, so. though. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. natural well, science. I personally yeah. would relate to Sarah Jane because I certainly had no interest in science. No. Yeah. And I'm studying science nine years now, yeah. and it wasn't until I moved house and I was forced to take it up as a junior certificate subject yeah. that I was made to do it. And before that, I thought I'd hated it. So here I am now, and it's I love it. Absolutely. So yeah, the questions. I think I'd be known amongst all my friends as the one who never stops asking questions. So maybe right. that's yeah. 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 curiosity. Yeah. In some way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I never so. really understood anything about science, you know, and it was something I never thought of. But the more I learn about science now, the more it's, I've always been interested in it. And is it's the curiosity, it's yeah. the asking questions, it's the mm -hmm. how it works, the why it works. It's part of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything and really seeing it everywhere. Yeah. So really, we're just nosy people. Yeah. Would that be a nice way to put it? <laughs> it's it's it that way. <laughs> we're, we're drove by, yeah. yeah, I like that. So then, David, I suppose, how is technology related to science? Yeah, um, I suppose we're becoming so much more dependent on it because the boundaries of science have been pushed and pushed and pushed. Now on your everyday lives, um, the, the products you see in the marketplace, it's unreal the amount of work and effort and research that has to go in to bring them out. Let's say on a day-to-day -day basis, we'd have access to very um, complicated tools, um, semiconductor processing, um, ion microscopes, SEMS, there's a lot of tools there which we take for granted, well I know I do and when one of your experiments gets stuck in a queue and you're kind of going why can't I have it now? <laughs> yeah. SEMS being of course electron Sorry. microscopes yeah. where we need, we, light can no longer see things yeah, so we need so to go small. down to finer particles to actually look at And things. computers as well, like yeah. programming and that has become such a large part of experiments in everyday.